Back with Peter King article entitled Roger Goodell is on a mission to mend fences with the players. It's a deep dive into the efforts of Roger and the efforts he, he's taken to make players aware that ownership knows it's uh, players know it's their league as well as the owners. Among Goodell's efforts, taking the time to meet with players on the celebration rule, inviting Brandon Marshall to the address the owners at the annual meeting in Arizona, making players more involved in the decision making process, and as we saw, having a little fun with being booed at the draft. With by the way, Philly perfected, but that's gone on really since the lockout yeah. in 2011. Every time Roger gets up there. That's what he hears. So let's dive deeper into this topic inside the NFL red zone. One thing that's helped Goodell have a relatively quiet offseason uh, is look how much he spent of the last six years in what's going on here. You know, I mean, we talked about the lockout, which lasted 132 days, the longest work stoppage in league history, although no games were missed. That's the important thing. There was a labor dispute in 2012 resulting in replacement reps, which culminated with the Phil Mary Monday night game between Green Bay and Seattle in Seattle. Then there was Bounty Gate in 2012. Saints players and coaches suspended for their roles in putting bounties on players. Paul Tagliabue later overturned basically all of it, although Sean Payton did have to sit out a year. Richie Incognito was suspended in 2013 for the fallout from the Dolphins and the bullying scandal involving offensive lineman Jonathan Martin. Then the NFL completely botched the Ray Rice suspension, originally two. Then it was changed and led to a revised personal conduct policy. And then, I don't know if you heard about this one, the deflation sensation. PSI, four games, Tom Brady. It was supposed to be in 2015. Instead, it ended up happening in 2016. And, of course, just like at the draft, Patriot fans, after the win in Super Bowl 51 uh, in Houston, let Roger hear it as well. Okay, so here's the question. The celebration rule, he's, I know he's reached out to some players. As former players, do you believe he's making an honest effort to make things better between players and management, or is this more about PR? Well, he hasn't had, he hasn't had any disciplinary issues that have been public, like those ones, ones that you mentioned right there. And that's where those are some tough issues to deal with right there. I mean, starting with the lockout and a lot of, a lot of the – uh, the gates that you're talking about right there. So he's had a tough go. He's had a tough go where he's had to deal with a lot of tough things, and I understand that. Um, I think there's a faction of players that is always going to look at Roger as someone that won't have their approval. Well, he's paid by the owners. Right. I mean, that, that's it the way it is. He's it, paid it doesn't by the matter, owners. of course, but as these younger players come up, I mean, and, and they're getting their hugs at draft, and, you know, Roger's, Roger's getting those relationships starting, and – as those players get older and some of the older players get weeded out, I mean, in four years, some of these younger players, these rookies will be stars now, and Roger will have good, possibly good relationships with them. So in time, in time, I think this still can be done for him. Do you see it as PR or an actual men? Well, I think it's a little bit of, a little bit of both. I really do. I, I think, like, like Teddy said, um, I don't think the players, <clears throat> some, of the, some of the players are going to you know, jump all in and say, hey, Roger's my guy. I think this is going to be a process. It's going to take time. And, you know, like Teddy talked about, some of the younger guys, you know, those are the guys that are going to be leading the way as far as mending the fences with the, you know, with the players and, and, and Roger Goodell. The older guys, they're salty. They're always going to be salty towards Roger Goodell. But there's a CBA thing coming in a few years. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Thank you. And I'm, I'm a skeptic, Trey, by nature and by trade. And, and I, I think I have you to do wonder. Well. Thank you. Uh, you say, is this an honest effort? And I don't know that it's, it's necessarily a question of honesty. It's a question of what is the motivation behind it? Is there a – does Roger Goodell feel personally like he wishes the players liked him more and he wants to actually go out? That's a possible thing. But the other thing to think about is that CBA negotiation that's coming up. And the players' union – has really made it a part of its message to its players that the commissioner and the league are not your family. They're not your friend. You know, we are. And I think if that's, you know, all these gates, there's more gates than on an Olympic slalom course that you just listed there. But the fact is it, it, it helps that message get across from union leadership to the players. Like, look, they're on one side. We're on this other side. Don't get it mixed up. As you look four years ahead to a CBA negotiation, it would behoove the league to try and fight back against that message a little bit with some real stuff. So if you, if you make it easy for union leadership to sell that to the players, then, then it puts you in a position where the players are buying into it, the rank and file with the players buy into it more. So I think there is a little bit of a, not public relations, but certainly some kind of aspect of, of image control that has a, a deeper purpose than just do, do they like me more. Number one, uh, Roger's a good guy. 
he's really a nice person. Two, he's sincere about wanting the players to be involved, particularly when it comes to rules making and safety and, and things like the, the uh, celebration rule to get them to buy in on the theory that, hey, we're all in this together, especially on the on-field stuff. Three, he was, in my humble opinion, badly trashed by lawyers in the Deflategate situation. He was def trashed in the media by people who didn't know what they were talking about and trashed by a federal judge and trashed by lawyers who were representing one of the plaintiffs or the defendant, I should say. So that didn't do well. That didn't treat him at, 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 not well. I, I don't think it treated him fairly either. That said, the most important relationship he can have going is forward that. is the one with D. Smith. And that's why Paul Tagliabue had 17 years of, of labor peace with because he and Gene Upshaw established a relationship that was able to transcend all of the issues that, that really they're on opposite sides in many cases. Now, reaching out to the players is a good thing because the players are going to be talking to D. And if the players say, listen, Roger's making an effort, he's making a sincere attempt here. Also, there's a lot of back channel talk that goes on between the NFL office and the, the, the union. And if that, if he's instructed those people, hey, let's do this, which I know he has, let's do this in a fair and honest way, then you'll get some movement. But it's really more about what's going to happen four years from now than anything else. Of course it is. And got the, the CBA goes through 2021. They can start negotiating, I guess, in a couple of years because it's been 10 years. It'll be 10 years then since the lockout. They, they wanted, the owners at least want to negotiate this summer. Like That's a thing right. that's going to come up here in the next couple of months. They might start talking soon. The owners want to talk about extending it. And you talk about the owners. Isn't Roger supposed to be the bad guy? He's supposed well, that, to be the job, way, right? But that's the way it's set up, right? He's supposed to be the bad guy, so 32 other owners look great. Right. That, that's that's and if, if, he, if that's the way it is, that's the way he's doing a great job yeah. because <laughs> there are there are fan bases that will never forget. And these, and these football people that say moving on, moving on, moving on, and all of that. There are certain things they won't forget about. Her, certain things were handled also. Fan is short for fanatic. I mean, in his his entry into Gillette Stadium the Thursday in the opener, that's going to be interesting to me also because you want to talk about people that never forget? Yeah. New England people, they never forget. Well, that's Tell the me thing. about it. Yeah. A <laughs> 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 couple of things there, though, Bill. I mean, the celebration rule is really low-hanging fruit. I mean, that, that's an easy but, sort of opening bid, if you but, will, right? But, but I, I will say this. That's been, a, that's been kind of a big issue, big thing for the players. The players have really embraced this whole celebration thing because players at the end of the day, they want to be able to, to express themselves and have fun. It's kind of like in, in training camp where I was telling, this, you know, telling the guys about it in the green room, you have the, the punt contest where the, the, the linemen get out there. If you catch it, it we have the night off. Exactly. This is kind of like that where, you know, the league is throwing it out there and like, hey, we want you guys to express it, yourself. It is low-hanging yeah. fruit, but – it's a start. It's, it's a great a bone until a, you get fined for that celebration. Exactly. It's a great yeah. first step. But I, I talked to some people in the NFLPA. They're much more concerned with the player conduct policy, right. uh, oh, absolutely. the issue of marijuana use, Abs right. and a couple other things. They really want to delve into some right. more serious issues. That those are some things that have a real, the right. real problem. And him being in the, uh, an, an independent arbitrator, an independent arbitrator on certain issues. Those are things <laughs> that, that would go a long that, way. A I don't, long, I don't, long. I don't see way. that happening. Well. That might be the biggest issue of all, then, because that CBA <laughs> that we're talking about. That is a true statement. That yeah. is a he big loves one. His power. A big one that the players would like to get a little more of a handle on. We'll see what happens as it go forward. But hey, we're making progress. <laughs> we're making a little bit of progress, an inch at a time. Still coming on this edition of NFL Live. We go inside the headlines to see how Brandon Marshall responds to Sheldon Richardson calling him out for the Jets' shortcomings last season. Plus, bye-bye minute 75 with the NFL shortening overtime from 15 to 10. We look back at the top 10 plays from the final five minutes of overtime that you ain't never going to see again. Car throws, catch Seth Roberts, breaks the tackle, he's oh. Touchdown! 